Hello, welcome again. We are uh, going to focus in uh, this week as well as next week on uh, properties of polymers. Uh, having looked at uh, a single macromolecule and its behavior, and then all the key features associated with macromolecules in terms of its glass transition or in terms of its crystallization behavior, uh, also mixing of different types of polymeric systems to get blends and composites. We, we've seen a wide ranging uh, gamut of uh, interesting concepts and uh, tools available uh, for us uh, so that we can manipulate the properties. And, and so in this week, uh, we will look at uh, what are all the different properties from mechanical, electrical uh, uh, properties which are relevant from an application point of view. Uh, given that we have discussed uh, polymeric systems of different kind, uh, in this lecture, uh, we will look at, you know, whether they form uh, uh, natural uh, ways in which we can achieve more effective recycling so that uh, we uh, continue to focus on the overall sustainability aspects of these polymeric materials. And uh, we will do this by first uh, quickly looking at uh, polymeric product and its uh, life cycle and then uh, highlight uh, that uh, post life cycle uh, handling of polymeric product is challenging because of the heterogeneities which are associated with uh, this polymer product. And uh, therefore, how blends and composites arise naturally in uh, recycled products, uh, which is uh, an advantage, but at the same time, it's a challenge for engineers and scientists to obtain the precise uh, uh, type of interactions between these components which are being added with each other, polymer one with polymer two, or uh, polymer one with filler one. And how do we achieve the correct microstructure and uh, overall compatibility between different uh, components so that we achieve a targeted performance. So if you look at the, the overall life cycle of a product and uh, uh, we've talked about the biogeochemical cycles and uh, how uh, from raw material uh, there is always a cycle going back to the raw material itself. If you look at polymer uh, product, uh, raw materials which come from uh, petroleum, uh, we have the polymer uh, synthesis and then uh, from polymer synthesis, we generally, uh, polymer is uh, compounded uh, with some additives and uh, fillers. Uh, so that this is ready to be processed. So compounding is an operation or a set of operations in which we get a polymer in a granule or a fiber or a, any form which is it can be then processed by a fabricator who is going to be interested in using the plastic or polymeric product for a specific application. So post compounding of course then it goes to processing where again we may add uh, different additives and fillers to use the polymer by itself or with blends and composites. And then, uh, so having done these uh, set of operations uh, in which uh, we synthesize the polymer, we compound it and we process it, we finally uh, uh, send it for an application. Uh, in, in case of single use plastic, this application window is just a single use. Uh, in many other cases, the service life may be years together. So it depends on uh, whatever is the application, the service life may be large or small. And post this service life, then what we uh, have is uh, several options. So since the service life is over, it can uh, uh, become a waste material. Of course, uh, in uh, our lecture, we saw that uh, reuse is a definite possibility, which uh, therefore can uh, reduce the amount of material which is going to waste. Uh, and uh, this waste material has a potential to interact with soil, water and air. And uh, this also we saw that how different states uh, uh, in environment uh, are of relevance as far as uh, polymeric materials are concerned. But having uh, uh, exhausted the possibilities of reuse, uh, then uh, we are uh, forced with uh, looking at uh, how to uh, look at this uh, waste, not going into soil, water and air, but again coming back as part of the cycle. So we have the options of uh, reuse uh, or uh, mechanical recycling or chemical recycling. And uh, so uh, all these three can uh, lead to certain amount of uh, usage. When we say chemical recycling, we can uh, basically combust and uh, incinerate and get some energy out or we could break down the macromolecules into smaller molecules and get some feedstock and this again can be actually brought back. So, so therefore, some amount of cycle closing can be done. Uh, however, each of these processes will lead to effluents. And so, uh, 
if we look at uh, this overall polymeric uh, product cycle, uh, there is a very complicated uh, closing of the cycle in case of polymers and this is what we need to achieve if we have to think overall in terms of sustainability. So the two predominant methods of recycling, uh, chemical recycling, which can uh, lead to feedstock uh, energy uh, or uh, mechanical recycling, which basically takes it back again to the compounding and processing stage so that we again can get a new polymer, uh, polymeric product. And so both mechanical and chemical recyclings are options. Generally, mechanical recycling is uh, preferred from a point of view where then uh, we are not changing the macromolecular uh, nature by depolymerizing, we are just reusing. But how many times can we do re mechanical recycling is also a question because uh, once we start processing and compounding the material and once it has been used in application, the macromolecules will not be the same as what they were synthesized. So they, because of the aging processes, because of the degradation processes, because of the interaction with all the other uh, environment and uh, other chemicals and temperature and uh, pressure and all the conditions, environmental conditions, basically macromolecular nature will change. And so how good a polymer is for mechanical recycling has to be also ascertained before we take up the mechanical recycling. So uh, all these are uh, very important uh, issues to be dealt with and we have seen that this life cycle, biogeochemical cycle, uh, uh, we have uh, in lecture 7 and 24 discuss these concepts which are very important for sustainability of overall polymeric system. Now, mechanical recycling may be uh, advantageous from many points of view, but what's the challenge? And uh, the amount of heterogeneities that are there in polymer product is astounding. And uh, we, we have, uh, we, we could think of waste in terms of, let's say, just the consumer uh, waste or uh, waste which is coming from industry itself because these polymers are fabricated, processed in an industry itself, you can have molds, uh, some overflow happening, some uh, packaging which is used in industry. When you change from one polymer to the other polymer in a mold, there is a changeover scrap. When we machine, we cut, uh, we shape, there can be scrap. So there is possibility of industrial waste as well as uh, consumer waste. And uh, just to again highlight the heterogeneity which is present, let's look at uh, what is involved in a multi-layer food packaging. The num look at the number of layers which are there. In, in terms of uh, consuming a food uh, item, uh, we will just open the foil and then consume it and then throw it and it's a single-use material. But look at the intricacies and uh, of this kind of a material system. So this has two aspects. One is the engineering and science of making such a film. It's quite interesting and, and an extremely innovative process by which we have come up with such a multi-layer packaging. Again, it's easy to say that why don't we just put multi-layer, but can we process it? Can we fabricate it? Will the multiple polymers which are being used, can I get the control thicknesses of it? So therefore, there is a material science of how to choose these different layers. Then there is a engineering fabrication of how to get these layers in a correct way. So very fascinating subject. And uh, just look at the design of it. So uh, the outer coating is just to protect whatever has been printed because quite often the printing and the appearance of the packaging will influence the consumer's uh, behavior. The outer layer has to be there because printing has to be there because not all polymeric surfaces can uh, be printing be more effective. So we need a surface which is uh, printing. Then we have a mainly uh, a structural layer. Structural layer will give the mechanical stability. Then uh, we have a barrier layer because structural layer may not be very effective in terms of stopping oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide uh, or UV radiation. So, so we need some barrier uh, film also. And to have both of these together, there may be a tie film, which is a compatibilizing film between the two. And then uh, finally, uh, to ensure that the packing is uh, uh, closely tied on to the overall uh, the food material which is being sold, we may have a biaxially oriented or, or a film which is basically a heat seal. So you can see that there are uh, these several layers in a very thin plastic material and this is what we have to recycle. So now you can see, so from a point of view of uh, science and engineering to get this film, 
very nice. Extremely innovative, very important uh, in terms of getting to know the science behind how diffusion happens, how different films interact with each other, interfacial science. Very interesting uh, that we can get such a film reproducibly and effectively. But now when we think of the sustainability aspect that now one has to recycle this, how can we do that? So therefore, in this case, we already have a material which has multiple polymers in it. And so if we want to really recycle such a thing, blend will be a natural choice that can I not just mix it all up and then use it as a blend. Just to give you again another idea of, you know, what is the different uh, types of plastics and uh, this is based on um, Indian data. And you can see that uh, polyethylenes and uh, polypropylene and PVC and polystyrene form large amounts. And, and so if we have to really recycle, blending some of these together may be an advantage in terms of getting a certain set of properties. One example is PET bottle. This is actually one of the products which is recycled quite effectively because its collection and uh, sorting is quite easy. But there is a challenge. We have the cap and the ring which is usually different color uh, than the transparent PET bottle that we have. Now that's polypropylene. Now can we recycle this? So actually quite often what is done now is manually the caps and the rings which is next to the cap will have to be separated so that PET bottle alone goes for recycling. Now that involves cost. So therefore can we do it in another way where we do not need to separate and just put PET polypropylene together and so form a blend. But then the key question will be, like based on what we have discussed in our blend uh, lectures, are PET, PP miscible? No, they are not. Then what will be the domain size of PP? How will it be distributed? And based on its distribution and microstructure, what will be the mechanical properties of the final part? Now. One of the important things for PET bottle as a water bottle or any other uh, soda or uh, uh, cold drinks uh, bottles is the transparency. Will the transparency remain? Of course not. So then what applications can they be used for? So therefore, uh, once we start using these uh, heterogeneous plastics mix and uh, we want to recycle them, there are several questions that arise. You know, how different are the, the polymers that are being uh, uh, targeted to be recycled, are they miscible? Can they be mixed at all to prepare a blend? What are the properties of that blend? Whether it's mechanically robust enough, whether uh, optically, if optical transparency is required, then this cannot be done. So therefore, these are all challenging options as far as recycling of uh, polymers goes. And uh, generally blending and composite making seems to be an easy way because already there is a heterogeneous material systems. Can we not all mix it up? And so some of this is being exploited in several applications. Uh, for example, if you just uh, look at uh, uh, plastic wood, you will see that uh, several people are using waste plastics to actually look at uh, generating wooden type of structures for interior applications or exterior applications. So generally, uh, blending and composite uh, may be uh, preferable because waste itself is uh, heterogeneous. And therefore, they become uh, natural raw materials for making blends and composites. Uh, it's possible that by blending and composites, we, we, we will uh, achieve maybe toughened uh, materials or uh, reinforced materials and therefore some improvement in properties. Sometimes by adding these things, maybe we will achieve something which was not there. So we may get a conducting composite. Uh, so in addition to just looking at mechanical performance, we may get an additional uh, criterion for choosing the material over uh, some other materials. So in general, uh, because of the heterogeneities of the systems, blending and composite making does seem to make sense. And uh, so just to uh, close this lecture, we will look at some examples of where uh, blending is being done by adding a biopolymer itself. And since this biopolymer is biodegradable or compostable, so therefore we are now replacing the amount of overall uh, non-renewable uh, mix in the overall product. So for example, uh, there are many products where starch has been blended with polyethylene, polypropylene or uh, polystyrene so that uh, we incorporate a biopolymer in a commercial product. Uh, it has also been in, in fact incorporated with the copolymer itself. So we have a polyethylene polypropylene copolymer mixed 
with a starch. So it's a blend and a copolymer together. Similarly, polylactic acid, which is a biodegradable polymer, uh, is also blended with several polymers. So in this case, what we are trying to do is to take a biopolymer and uh, take other sets of polymeric materials and mix them together. So the recycled product has less of the polymeric material, which is may not be part of the overall uh, closed cycle or the circular economy. However, biopolymers, because of the renewable uh, resources, as we have seen earlier, can be part of a circular economy. So therefore, we are re reducing the percentage of the non-renewable component in our final products. There are challenges because blending with starch, does it lead to the required properties? One other key thing that uh, we have to remember from an overall sustainability point of view is the life cycle cost associated with each of these. So we have seen that there is energy uh, cost or footprint associated with the raw material itself and also there is a footprint associated with processing. So starch and uh, polylactic acid uh, may have less footprint from a material point of view, but if you are trying to make these blends, what is the processing footprint? What is the fabrication footprint? And so many of these are extremely challenging uh, topics for us to uh, contend with and arrive at better and better and more sustainable answers for polymers and polymeric products to be as sustainable as possible. And so as I mentioned, plastic wood is also an idea where uh, recycled plastics are being used for furniture and for exterior applications such as fencing and uh, transport sector applications where natural fibers uh, are being used with uh, recycled plastics. So one of the other thing that uh, comes to mind when uh, we think of these recycling is uh, that can we not uh, improve the performance while doing recycling? Because generally the idea of recycling is that uh, the PET bottle which was used for a water bottle uh, which is a, uh, an application where food grade is required, the uh, specific stability of PET bottle is required into something which is uh, a less uh, like, like a bucket or like a uh, soap case or, or and a product which, is, which has less uh, cost. And, and so therefore it's recycled at the same time, it is actually uh, come down in its value. But can we do an upcycling? So while we are anyway recycling the material, can we not uh, manipulate the materials in such a way that uh, we upcycle the material. So this is something uh, by value addition and upcycling, then we will not have this issue of recycling always implying lower cost and lower uh, performance from the part. And, and so this is something which is very important because if we have all the options available in terms of recycling, upcycle, downcycle, uh, cycling, recycling at the same level, then uh, we will have again uh, similar to what uh, overall uh, biogeochemical cycle is, where cellulose, for example, gets recycled in multiple ways in a biogeochemical cycle, while similar uh, flexibility we should have with respect to polymeric materials being sustainable. So we will discuss uh, some of this uh, in uh, lecture number uh, 73, which is related to the upcycling of uh, many of these polymeric materials. So with this, uh, we will close this lecture. Uh, thank you.